This is the Copymaster 300 V2, an independent dual extruder 3D printer with an impressive print volume and mechanical design. With this machine you can 3D print in two colours, or a separate filament for supports, or even two separate materials in the same print. But with that capability comes a significant price and complexity premium, so let's check it out. I was sent this machine from Copymaster 3D, a 3D printed company from across the pond in the UK. From initial impressions it's built like many other i3 style printers on the market, and goes together much the same way, with four bolts secure in the gantry to the sheet metal base. While it may look visually similar to a Creality machine, it's actually not. However, it is a rebrand from another, lesser known Chinese 3D printing company, Tenlog, but more on that later. In this box you'll get a very simple one page assembly manual which I've since destroyed using for bed leveling, sensors that detect filament outage, some spares and tools, and this blue stuff to insert into the extrusion for like, making the machine more pretty? Nah, not for me thanks. Connectivity is through full size SD card and a nice color capacitive touch screen with a lot of functionality, but sadly no Wi-Fi connectivity. It has quite the substantial footprint for an i3 design, being one of the largest I have ever tested, and comes with a sizable print volume too of 310 by 310 by 350 millimeters in Z, with V rollers for the bed and Z axes like you'd expect. The gantry, however, is where things are very much non-standard indeed. Instead of a single extruder on V rollers like you'd normally find, this printer has two extruders riding on a single linear rail, and each extruder is driven by its own independent stepper motor. This is known as IDEX, or Independent Dual Extrusion, and in my humble opinion is the best way to do dual extrusion. There's no filament changes, no shared nozzle or the need to purge colours, only need one colour? Cool, just use one extruder, the other one stays parked during the whole print. In my opinion though, the best benefit of IDEX is the ability to easily print separate materials which require different printing temperatures or settings such as combining semi-flex with rigid PLA, giving you a combination of rigid and flexible properties in the one print. There's also these neat party tricks, duplication and mirror mode printing. This lets you print twice the number of objects in the same time as it would take a regular 3D printer to print one, providing they fit into the halved print volume. You can't use any old mainboard to run a system like this either, so this printer is powered by the very special 10-log multi-nozzle motherboard with no less than seven axes control. Count them. Extruder 1, Extruder 2, Y, Z1, Z2, X1, and X2. I'm sorry, two Z drivers? Yep, this machine actually homes both sides independently to ensure it's actually level without the need to sync both Z screws together with a belt or having one driver slave to two motors with no feedback. This is actually pretty darn cool, and on top of it all, they've used optical end stops as mentioned for much greater accuracy over the typical cheap mechanical limit switches you'd normally see. However, before you can 3D print anything on this machine, you must first calibrate it. Two extruders, so just twice the effort of a regular 3D printer, right? Well, no, because they must also be calibrated to each other, otherwise your dual color prints won't align and look like this, or one nozzle will be lower than the other, and your result will be this disaster. To calibrate height, you need to loosen a screw on extruder 2, shove a thin wrench into this slot, which is a little bit awkward, but not too bad, and despite the small range of movement you can get, the thread is actually fairly coarse, so it takes a little bit of practice to nail. Both extruders key into a really nicely machined aluminium block, but you'll need to do this again if you ever replace the nozzle, or service them in any way. Once you've aligned them to the Z, you also need to do the same for X and Y so that your dual color prints line up correctly. There's a few ways you could do it, but I threw this rectangle model together to show me how far the nozzles were misaligned. You then look at the finished print, take the amount they're misaligned by, and change the X2 and Y2 offsets to compensate. Be warned, this process is basically a ton of trial and error, and if you change Extruder 2's nozzle height as I mentioned, you'll have to go through this process all over again. I was rushing initially, so it took me quite some time to nail down the process, so take your time, get it right in sequence, because damn, are the prints worth the effort. I've said it before, I don't care much for multicolor printing, but these are some of the prettiest dual color models 
I've ever done. The demo code I found on the SD card has a range of ooze mitigation approaches employed, but I found a thin ooze shield using the provided Simplify 3D profile was my preferred method with no purge tower required. General print quality was impressive too, considering just how heavy these direct drive extruders are. The choice of the DE15 connectors commonly used for VGA monitors on old school computers is uh, somewhat questionable, but with other 3D printing companies using thin flex cables so often now, I can't see it being any worse, and I certainly haven't noticed any burning or overheating from use. All of the pictures online of this printer just show them awkwardly draped over the machine during operation though, so I zip tied mine to the top of the gantry to keep them out of the way. Is it pretty? No. Is it better than just having them flop around on the bed? Yes. But let's take a look at some of the 3D prints off this machine. Now, this is just a selection of what I've printed testing out the Copymaster 300 V2, and let's start with the clearance and tolerance gauge. Now this is special because it's printed in dual color. It's got the body in one color of one extruder and the little parts that move in another color. And it got down all the way to 0.2 millimeter clearances, which is ridiculous. Uh, some single extruder machines can't even get that. But the problem is looking close, you can see the colors aren't perfectly aligned. And that's because of that trial and error approach to the nozzle alignment. I think if I got it just a little bit more perfect, I could get it down to 0.15 clearances. But I did test my more recent uh, clearance gauge that I'm testing, and again, this only got down to 0.2 as well. The 0.15 is stuck in place despite being the single extruder print. But really, this is pretty darn impressive. And also, other multi-body prints that I would normally do in one extruder work too, like this one-way bearing, this clutch. This is printed with two, two different extruders, and it worked off the print bed. But again, I will say getting that Z height correct with the two extruders is very difficult because I printed with a raft and little bearing parts in red fused a little bit too much to that raft, whereas the blue did pull away freely. So again, getting that perfect, quite challenging. Now let's move on to some interesting semi-flex materials. So this is a semi-flex and I did try a more flexible TPU and it didn't work on the direct drive extruders, but semi-flex works totally fine. And because we can print two materials at once, I tried something a little bit ambitious. This is the Ultimaker dual material drill. So it's, you know, it's their model designed to show off the Ultimaker 3's capability. I just got the model and printed it at half scale on the Copymaster 300 V2. And it's pretty good. Like the detail is ridiculous. It's a semi-flex with a PLA. Uh, the blue is PLA, the pink is semi-flex. The model's uh, not really designed that well for dual material. Like you can see here, it's sort of lifting free because the two parts are just really like just touching. There's no king. So I thought I'd actually design my own model to even better test the capabilities of dual material, which is this tire. So this tire is printed with a solid PLA wheel and the tire itself is the semi-flex. So completely flexible and then the rim is hard rigid plastic. And I actually designed this with a bit of a keying functionality so the plastics are properly joined together. It's not gonna come off the rim or anything like that. Really, really cool showcase of what you could do in terms of functional prints using a dual uh, extruder iDEX system like this. In terms of demo G code on the SD, there was a few that I printed like this dual color technology outlet uh, plaque, which prints very, printed very cleanly considering that there's only tiny little bits of the blue plastic in the white. But these two models are my favorite by far. Uh, let's start with the T-Rex. So this is obviously an example I found on the SD card to showcase the support material being a different plastic. For example, you could use PVA if you're brave enough and dissolve it away. But this is just two different colored PLAs. Uh, it, it was interesting. It looked like it was set up to have a purge bucket and then it would move across but of course this machine didn't come with a purge bucket so there's a few of these dangly strings on it but they just broke away mostly it was like a 26 hour print or something i don't remember exactly but a very long time but the detail is really nice on the t-rex and again this is designed to showcase the fact that you can just break support off or dissolve it away using a different material but this little dragon is by far out of all the prints that i tested my favorite. I use that marble filament again with a bright orange PLA, dual color, and it's so flawless. This was interesting. It printed without a ooze shield. It actually just used a, a purge pillar, and it just is fantastic. It's 
my favorite print out of the whole lot. Because it's a very large i3 style 3D printer, I did want to see if there's any gantry wobble as it moved up in the Z direction. So I did print two very boring columns, but I'll show a close up here. You can see that there is no wobble at all. The layer consistency is very good. In fact, you can even see where I changed the print speed on one of them because the plastic's glossiness changes but the accuracy remains completely the same. So that's really quite impressive on an i3 style printer. There is no perceivable Z wobble. All right, so this beast can clearly print well in a range of materials. So let me run you through what I like about the Copymaster 300 V2 and what I don't. I love the gantry setup for the most part. The linear rail is really smooth and despite the extruder heads weighing a lot, I didn't see too much ghosting artifacts nor any layer shifts on the printed parts. However, the belt tensioning solution is far from optimal. There isn't any. Instead, the belts have this random bit of metal crimped to the ends and they're shoved into slots in the sheet metal. And from the factory, the lower belt for Extruder 2 was incredibly floppy with no ability to tension it. So I printed this little piece to take up some of the slack, but there's barely room for anything here. And I can't see how the user is actually even supposed to tension the belt over time because they will get looser. A different approach is much needed urgently. The design of the extruders themselves though is pretty nice. They handle semi-flex okay, but I couldn't get really flexible filaments to work. And they never stripped out filament during my test, even when up against the glass bed. The printer comes with painter's tape, but who would use that in 2020? Instead, I heated it up to 60 degrees Celsius and used a little bit of glue stick. And I found that my prints all stuck reliably, even if they had thin features using this approach. The alignment process, as I mentioned, is incredibly tedious, especially if you're fresh to 3D printing, you're in for a pretty steep learning curve. Not only do you have to contend with the usual bed level and nozzle height, but aligning both extruders in all three axes using just trial and error basically, doesn't really feel like an optimum solution. The gantry already has independent Z motors and the light gates, so some kind of sensor on each extruder head to figure out where they are could go a long way to make this process more automatic and less guesswork. The CraftBot 3 I reviewed last year accomplished this alignment process by printing lines that went in and out of phase, and then the user would pick the two that are closest to then figure out the offset. And while it's a very different price bracket, the new CraftBot flow I'm testing currently does the alignment process completely automatically somehow. This is the only sticking point for this printer where I would hesitate recommending it to a complete newbie. Because if you're keen to play around with dual color and dual material printing, this thing is more than capable and you'll still experience excellent single extruded print quality thanks to the IDEX approach. It uses modern drivers, it's quiet, and the interface is excellent. Copymaster 3D has a machine listed for just shy of 700 pounds, including VAT, which at the time of filming is about 860 US or $1,300 Australian. Buying this machine from them gives you local support, and I have to say the team over at Copymaster 3D were really friendly and quick to assist, despite being in lockdown for the past few weeks. But if you're not from the UK, Tenlog sells the TLD3 Pro for 600 US plus 60 delivery, direct from China, so that could be an option to you too. A big thanks to Copymaster 3D for sending this printer across for purpose of review. You can find links to it in the description below. And if you want to learn more about 3D printing and 3D design, well, you're in the right place. Here on Makers Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. So maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss future content. Thanks for watching. Bye.